Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inside Artesian Basketball here on WREP 15 Sports. I'm your host, Eric Meyer, joined by Artesian head coach Kip Staggs. We have not been on in a couple of weeks the winter weather playing havoc with our schedule here at the high school, so our time to be able to tape this during the day eliminated when we don't have school or we have a two-hour delay. But we're back at it this week talking with the coach about a couple of contests, also looking ahead to a couple of games as well. Coach, let's just go back to the last game that you had on Friday night in the John R. Wooden Gymnasium, a mid-state conference matchup, county rivalry game, uh, two veteran head coaches in mid-state conference play along within the state of Indiana as well. A great atmosphere, a great contest on Friday night against Plains, or against Mooresville. Well, it was a classic Martinsville-Mooresville contest. You know, it went down the wire and uh, both teams played well, uh, traded punches. And, you know, you think back to last year, the game went down to a three-point shot at the end of the game there. I, I go back to uh, many years ago when a kid named Chris Love was from Mooresville, throws one in at, at half court to, for, for the win. So this is just a very common occurrence where both schools get together and it doesn't really matter who's on the floor. It's just always a close battle. And, um, you know, I thought our guys played well. thought we did a lot of good things on both ends of the floor. We didn't shoot the ball as well as we needed to to win, but we were definitely in a position to win the game at the end. As a contest, like you said, you're in a position to win at the end. It's a game that, as we go back through the tape, putting the highlights again uh, together, late, not a lot of points scored, really, though, a product of some teams that played well defensively, some teams that were able to cause some problems for some people defensively, but also the methodical play that really Mooresville, along with you guys, also kind of did a little bit. But uh, those final parts of the game there, both teams going back and forth. And like you said, you always want a chance to be able to have the, the win or tie it up there at the end. Well, this is just another game where we've held the other team underneath their offensive average. We've done a really good job over the last six, eight games of, of uh, slowing the game down, keeping the other team underneath their offensive average, defending pretty well in the half court. So we're pleased with that progress, progression that we've made through the course of the second half of the year. And, uh, you know, we had a four-point quarter there in the second that uh, really hurt us. We got off to a good start against Mooresville. Uh, you know, and credit our guys. I mean, we got down five or six there in the fourth, and then we made a run, and we turned them over. We got some shots to go in and sped the game up a little bit there when we needed to. And, uh, you know, like we talked about, we're there at the end. But, you know, overall, uh, you know, pleased with our effort, pleased with a lot of things we did. Tough stretch of games for you guys here that you've had. Coming up at the end of the season, you've got a couple of games left now, three games as we wrap up the regular season. As you're starting to head into that, what are some of the things you're trying to look for, trying to correct, looked out of the kids as they head towards these final three contests, along with getting ready for the sectional play? So what we've done in practice is we've, we've shortened our practice a little bit. We've uh, looked at a few areas where we need to improve on some things. You know, it might be jumping to the ball, it might be uh, being denial, it might be helping recover, it might be handling the ball screen. So we've tried to clean up a few of those things. We've had a lot of games in a row at the end of January, early part of February. So we've really not had an opportunity to work on a lot of the little things that you need to. So we went back to the basics this week and tried to clean up a few things that I think we've been able to do. And then, uh, you know, at the same time, continue to shoot the ball, continue to look to execute things a little bit better. Just fine tune, clean up and uh, get yourself ready not only for the end of the season but also for the tournament. Getting ready for the end of the season, getting ready for the tournament before we get there though. Let's go ahead and take a look back at some of the highlights from the Artesians last game, the contest against the Mooresville Pioneers that Martinsville battled on on Friday night. So Mooresville's, uh, they run a 1-3-1 one, one, little half court zone and they, they pack it in or they stretch it out. There you see uh, you know Andy on a quick Quick rebound there on a make or on a miss, and then Reed's able to get to the baseline for a pull-up jumper. And uh, we got off to a really good start in this game. I thought we played with a lot of uh, poise. There's a nice pass to Tyler at the high post. He's able to knock that jump shot down, and uh, we were able to get in our 2-2-1 press. Uh, here's Andy driving in there and making a nice little shot, starting to finish those a little bit better. And uh, you'll see us, you know, Mooresville's gotten ahead here in that uh, – Second quarter, there's a nice pass by Elijah Hoskins to Chase that really kind of took the lid off the basket for us at that point. Here we come out in the third quarter, and we're able to get the ball inside that little 1-3-1, one, one, and that was a big bucket for us to start the half. 
gave us a little confidence. Uh, here we are, we, I thought we passed the ball pretty well. Uh, there's Reed scoring on the baseline. Uh, and then it's 23 to 19. Uh, they hit a three. Uh, we get the ball to Damon, gets it over to Tyler, who's able to knock that shot down at the elbow. We thought that was an area we needed to get the ball to, was in that elbow, in that paint area. And you see here in that second quarter, in that third quarter, second half, we're able to get the ball inside a little bit better. Uh, here's a little bit of a transition. We kick it out to Damon for the three. That was a big basket for us, really kind of ignited us a little bit, a little bit more. We're playing fairly well right through that third quarter stretch. And then, uh, you know, here's a nice pass uh, into Tyler from Damon, and he's able to keep, we're able to keep each other in check. Here's where we speed them up a little bit. They turn it over. Uh, Tyler gets the steal, passes ahead to Andy, and he's able to, to finish at the other end. Uh, here's a nice drive by, by Tyler. He's not able to put it in, but Chase had a really nice game, had seven, eight rebounds. Here's a big basket within a minute. Reed's able to cut it to one. We call a timeout. And, uh, you know, at that point, we just uh, were up 40 to 39. Uh, they go down and, and uh, uh, turn it over. We're able to bring the ball back down. We're not, we're, we missed a shot there on a baseline runner uh, to, to get the lead. Uh, we foul them. They hit two free throws. Now we throw one up at half court and it, and it rims out. So, you know, we really battled pretty well. Uh, like I said, proud of our guys the way we competed. And uh, definitely a team that's, uh, you know, they're going to probably win the conference. You know, everybody had the uh, earmarked at Plainfield probably by right. Christmas. But the way the conference has shook out, uh, Mooresville's in the driver's seat right now. They beat Greenwood on Friday and they win the, they win the conference outright. So you're looking at Mooresville maybe winning the conference like we talked about, going back to the Pioneers. You talked a little bit about their 1-3-1 one, one, uh, that they will run. How difficult is that for teams to play against? You hear that a lot, that 1-3-1 one, one is difficult because you don't see it a lot. But especially with them, what are some of the things that give teams problems with that 1-3-1? One, one? Well, in this case, they're long. They've right. got some length up top. They've got length in the middle. And so it makes you it makes you – uh, pass it side to side. It makes you not want to drive in there. And, uh, but to credit our guys, we're able to get the ball in the paint, as you saw there in the second half. And so it's not something you see all the time. So it makes it difficult to play against. And they stay in it the whole game. It just kind of grinds at you. It, it, you know, it, it uh, you know, kind of wears you down a little bit. And it forces you to make some shots. Uh, you know, I told our coaches that we needed to make five threes going in that game. I thought that was a real important thing, that we knocked down a few threes. To, to make that zone uh, get more spread out. And uh, we end up hitting two. So, you know, that, that didn't go our way. And then, you know, also in the fourth quarter, we missed four free throws in the fourth quarter. They didn't help us either. So there's a lot of places in that game where you make a play here, you make a change there in terms of what the result is, it's going to maybe change the result of the contest. So you move on from the Mooresville contest. You've got a couple of games coming up here. You really almost set up a, a similar situation that you're going to face if once you get in the tournament, if you get the long haul, you're going to have to play three games within a single amount of time. That's what you guys have really left on the season of Friday, Saturday, and then flip back on the road at Avon on Wednesday. But let's focus on that first game, that Friday night Mid-State Conference matchup at home against Whiteland. Before we get to the Warriors and what they're going to bring, it'll be senior night, an opportunity for uh, you to honor the seniors uh, that have uh, represented here at Martinsville in their careers. Absolutely, and we're not only going to uh, recognize our basketball seniors, we'll also recognize our senior cheerleaders. We'll also recognize our senior dance team members as well. So there's uh, you know multiple things going on. We're going to recognize our academic decathlon team at halftime who won the state this past weekend. So uh, congratulations to them. So there's a lot going on on Friday night. But uh, our seniors, you know, obviously uh, Tyler Stead has the most experience. He started for us as a, as a freshman. I remember putting him in there against Bloomington South. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's just really been a, a steady demeanor for us for the last three and a half years and has really had a nice career. Uh, you know, t uh, Tyler, um, is a tremendous athlete in, in the sense that he rebounds, he runs well for his size, and uh, it's just really, uh, really too bad he's been hobbled by those back injuries over the last couple of years. Uh, but he's really stayed in there, he's hung in there, he's battled through that pain, and, and so you know he's done a lot for our school. He's a great student, 3.9 student, uh, really solid on the SAT, I think 1260, uh, and so he's done a great job not only 
uh, in the classroom, on the court, but you know you see them out there in community service projects, whether it be the peer tutors and some of those things. So, you know, he's been a really good representative of our school. Uh, Reed Staggs, obviously, been around for three years. Again, hobbled with a little bit of an injury, but, uh, you know, he's had a nice career. His game has grown as, as he's gotten older, and, uh, you know, he's done a lot of good things as well. He's a 3-8 student, a 1260 SAT guy. Uh, you know, gives back to the community very similar to Tyler in different ways and so very, very pleased with him and, you know, how he's matured. Uh, Chase Havlin, you know, he's been that uh, workhorse in the middle. He's been the guy that's really uh, come to practice and always gives you a lot of energy uh, in the games. Uh, you know, played his best game probably the all year against Mooresville, so he continues to get better. And, you know, he's been hobbled with a shoulder injury uh, all year coming out of football. You know, he banged himself up there a little bit against Mooresville, but, you know, he didn't, hasn't missed a, uh, a time in practice this week at all and just kind of hangs in there. He's going to Indiana State to play football, so we're very happy for him and what he's going to do. And, and those three guys, they go back to about the fifth and sixth grade. You know, they've played a lot of basketball together, uh, travel, uh, you know, over the years. And so, you know, they, they're very familiar with each other. And so, and then Elijah Hoskins is our fourth senior. Elijah is uh, very pleased that he came out. He's really helped us this year. He played for us as a freshman and uh, opted not to play his sophomore and junior year, which is fine. We open the door to him as we do everybody every year and uh, has just been a nice contributing factor to us. Been good in practice. He's had a good attitude and uh, he's made a few shots, I think, back to the Franklin Central game when he made it several threes for us. So, uh, you know, Elijah has been a nice addition for our team this year. So those four guys make up our team. Uh, from our, for our seniors uh, for this year and uh, very pleased with their contributions. I know when you talk about it, you don't put really any e extra emphasis on Reed or not, but it's going to have to be, I don't know, an emotional night or something here for you and how you'll handle that with uh, his senior night. Oh, absolutely. You know, every time you have, uh, you know, I went through this with Ellie when she was a cheerleader and, and she was, uh, you know, we had to walk down the track and walk out on the court. And so, you know, it's bittersweet, but, you know, it's time for them to move on. It's time for them to make the next step in life, whatever that might be for each of these kids. And so, you know, for the high school career, it ends for everybody at some point. And so for him, it's going to be his last senior game at home on Friday. And just, uh, you know, very proud of him, obviously. Uh, he's a gym rat. He's been in the gym a lot. Um, never had to bug him about working on his game or getting in the weight room or getting stronger. So he's been a pleasure to work with. You'll have those seniors to honor on senior night. You've got the Whiteland Warriors that are going to come to town on Friday night as well. Um, it's the key team with Coach Wadsworth. They've had like the same core for several years. That core graduated last year. You've got a few leftovers. But what are you going to see out of his ball club coming up on Friday night? Well, you know, they've got some guys that have uh, been addition to their team. You know, they've got a transfer in from from uh, Greenwood that's a, a starter. Um, you know, they've got a, a really good freshman that plays for them a lot. Uh, they've got Crow, who's a, a 6'5 kid that can shoot it outside. They've got a kid named Neil who's ambidextrous, who's played forever, it seems like, and can get to the basket. And, uh, you know, so they've got, they've got a, a mixture of guys that, uh, you know, they've had some really good games, and uh, they're very similar to us. They've been in a lot of games can't get over the hump. I don't think their record is indicative of the team that they have. They've got some good height. They're going to play a 2-3 zone, going to play a little man-to-man, -man, uh, pick us up another 1-2-2, two, two, uh, three-quarter court, court zone and press as well. So they, they kind of mix things in to, uh, to make things difficult for you. But, you know, I expect another good game. I expect a game that, that's going to be in the single digits. It could go either way. The team that makes the fewest mistakes has the opportunity to win. And, and I don't think this is any different from maybe Mooresville, from that matter. Um, you know, they've got, uh, they've got enough skilled guys. They've got enough shooters that, uh, you know, they've got some guys that can score the ball. So we're going to have to do a good job of finding Crow on the perimeter, keeping Neil in check. Um, they're down a guy right now. The Chase Ferguson kid's out, has an injury. So they're moving some new guys in. So they've, you know, they're kind of trying to find their way. And at the same time, this is a sectional opponent. Right. So we'll know more on Sunday what that sectional looks like. 
But, uh, you know, our main goal right now is to get a win on Friday. And that's what I was, the next question was going to be. You don't know, obviously, going in, if you're going to play them, have a chance, or however that shakes out. Uh, you could draw them in the first round, first game out of the bat. You don't know. Does your approach change at all because they are potentially a section? Not player? at all. I think you go in with the intent on Friday to win the game. And, you know, I think that's our intent every game. And, uh, you know, there might be some tweaks and things we might change between, you know, this Friday and if we happen to draw them for Tuesday. But, you know, we are who we are, and, and you've got to stop us, and we've got to stop them. And so that's why execution is important. That's why everybody has to be on the same page offensively and defensively. You've got to be in sync. And so, you know, it's kind of like the Big Ten. Right. You know, you think about the Big Ten, and everybody knows everything about everybody. Well, our conference and our section was the same way. Everybody is similar in, in a lot of areas, uh, a lot of good coaches. And so everybody knows everything about everybody. We know that they're going to run this, we're going to know that. And so, but they know the same about us. So it's about how you execute it, how you counter their, what they do to take things away. And so that's what, that's what you have to deal with. You'll have that contest, and you've got two more, like we said. You've got a Columbus East Ball Club that's starting to play really well, a head coach Brent Chitty, and then you'll come on Wednesday and maybe a team that's one of the most athletic you'll play all year in Avon. So can you talk just a little bit quickly about those last two games that you'll, you'll have and how you'll try to utilize those to kind of get ready for the tournament. Well, absolutely. So like I, I've told our guys earlier in the week, we've got – We've got three different style of teams. We got a team on Friday that's going to be somewhat methodical, Zonia. You got a team on Saturday with Columbus East that's going to be a little bit more free spirited, a little more open court. Uh, Frost is a nice player for them. Johnson's a nice point guard. Uh, so, you know, they've won three in a row here, so they're playing well. They beat Franklin at Franklin last Saturday. And then, as you mentioned, Avon on Wednesday is probably one of the most athletic teams we'll play all year. Quick, long, athletic. Uh, really changing, you know, how they play there with the new change in coach. So uh, this will really help us actually going into the tournament because we're going to see a little bit of all of that come that week. So you've got all that variety coming up. You've got senior night coming up on Friday. Good luck with that, and we'll see you there. Appreciate it. That's Artesian head coach Kip Staggs here. Inside Artesian basketball, Martinsville coming up, like we said, three games left. Get out there on Saturday or Friday, we should say. Saturday as well if you want to make the trip over to Columbus East. We get out there Friday, especially support the Artesians at home senior night as they battle the Whiteland Warriors. As always, I'd like to thank the head coach, Kip Staggs, for coming in. For the coach, along with the RTV2 students who helped produce it, I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Artesian Basketball.